So this is a follow-up video just to show how easy it is to go from gasoline over to natural gas. All right, so here's my XP1200EH. Um, right now, I have not run this on gasoline in probably over eight months or more. I recently converted this a couple months ago to natural gas, and I have a whole video on how this, on how to do that. What I want to do is prove a point that this can run on gasoline. Right now, I have the fuel shut off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fuel on, but before I do that, I need to go ahead and add some gasoline. Um, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of gasoline, probably have it run itself out in a couple minutes. Um, just have it run and see you know, how it goes. One thing that I will mention is that for the past year, I've been using this solar panel trickle charger that goes inside my shed. This is the other end of the trickle charger. It connects to this right there and have some leads that's already connected to the battery. You can see the, the black and the red over there, negative and positive. And uh, I left this trickle charger for, you know, past year or so. Um, so this is a test to see, you know, if my battery is still charged after about six months, seven months of storage, and if it's easily able to start on gasoline. After it finishes running, I added a little bit of gasoline I put in here. I then plan on connecting it up to natural gas. So one thing about this is several months ago, I ran the entire gas tank and carburetor dry of gasoline. I've only on, ever run this on natural gas. So again, it's been about a couple months. Just gonna put very little bit of gasoline. I don't wanna put much. The whole intention is just to see if I can get this started on gasoline. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, once it's run drying, I'm gonna run it back on natural gas. I think that's more than enough. Just a little bit of gasoline. I don't need much. All right. Over here, let's go ahead and open up the gas. I don't have to touch the natural gas at all. Um, let's see here, I do think I need to keep it on choke. Let's put that on choke. All right, here's my keys. All right, so this has been sitting in storage. Let's see if this battery tender has been working. Wow, that was um, really easy. I'm, I'm impressed. It's been sitting in storage. So I'm gonna let it run. I don't have much gasoline in here. Let it finish running through all its gasoline and then I'm gonna go ahead and transition it over to natural gas once it's done. All right, so this just cut out. It ran maybe about 20 minutes on gasoline and it just cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and transition this over from gasoline to natural gas. It's very super simple and I'll show you how this is done. All right, so here's the elbow I got connected to the regulator. Here's the other end of the hose, or the first end of the hose. I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside here, screw this on, and then connect uh, the other end of this hose to my natural gas meter. All right, have it hooked up now. Let's go to the other end. So here it goes, my meter. Here's the other end of my hose connector. I need to do this two hands, so I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm gonna connect this. All right, have that seated. Turn this on. All right, one thing I like to do is I like to put this on top of my little grill, take off any um, weight off of the meter. All right, come back over here. So the choke is halfway because I was running it on gasoline. So I need to turn the choke wide open. Here's the gasoline, shut that off. Shut. All right, gasoline is shut off. Back here press it just for a little bit all right I think I did it enough let's try this all right that was also easy because now it's running on natural gas simple enough so easily able to switch over from gasoline to natural gas all right, so there you have it. I was able to run this off of gasoline, ran it dry, and switch it over to natural gas. So it's just as simple as opening a valve and adjusting my choke. That's pretty much it. I don't want really to have to do much. So.
very simple to do if you're interested in how a tri-fuel works um, one thing that's worth noting that um, if you see my previous video on how I converted this now I do have this connected to natural gas obviously this little valve here you can f buy some fittings and you can convert this back to uh, propane. I'm, I'm not familiar with it because I'm not really, to tell you the truth, honestly, I am not interested in propane. Uh, but I've seen other videos on how they do that. Basically, you just take this out, put a little another valve, another connector. You don't need a big, thick hose like this, I believe, for propane. You just need to have another separate, smaller regulator. Uh, you will have to readjust this, uh, but you can easily run it. So, so the way this works is when you open it up, you're letting more natural gas in. When you close it, you're restricting the amount of gas so you have to find the right amount of pressure um, now this valve this is what makes the difference right here this generator right here it originally came with a smaller regulator which is on the other side behind that air intake um, that was only set up for a propane it did not have this valve this valve here and it and the size of this regulator is what makes a difference because you're able to adjust the amount of gas that goes inside uh, the carburetor this is what makes it a true a tri-fuel um, this is what allows you to switch between propane and natural gas, whereas the stock regulator is just pretty much set at its pace just for propane, and that's it. You can't adjust it. You can't do anything with it. So hopefully this is helpful for the folks out there who are interested in just in tri-fuel generators um, in general, you know, how they work, how, if you're able to switch them over to natural gas and gasoline and whatnot. So that's pretty much it. Thank you.